Hello and welcome to today's class. For today, we'll be looking at lenses and the mirror equation. All right. Uh, we'll do it. We'll look at what the lens is, and then we'll look at um, a kind of relationship between lenses and mirrors, and then we'll solve lots and lots of past questions pertaining to lenses and the mirror equation. So first things first, let's define lens. What is a lens? By definition, a lens is a transmissive optical device that focuses or disperses light beams using refraction. All right, so that's how we define a lens. Now, usually, when it comes to this part, this is under optics in physics. When it comes to lenses and mirror in um, jump optics, uh, one of the things you notice is that lenses and mirrors are used interchangeably. All right, um, to some certain degrees. Uh, we use the concept of lenses and mirrors interchangeably. Now the question is this, lenses and mirrors, are they the same thing? Or are they different between lenses and mirrors? Now here's it. Now even though both devices are used in optics, there is a difference between mirrors and lens. There's a difference between uh, a lens and a mirror. Alright, so what, what's the difference? Now, the mirror is a device based on the principle of reflection, whereas the lens is a device based on the principle of refraction. All right. So that's like one of the major difference between a lens and a mirror. All right. A mirror works with the principle of reflection; it only reflects light beams, whereas lenses actually refract. So the major difference is in reflection and refraction. Mirrors only reflect, while lenses refract. All right. We've dealt with the concept of reflection and refraction when we did waves in the previous class. All right. Okay. So with that being said, we said we use lens. We um, use the term lenses and mirrors um, interchangeably. So let's look at the types of perhaps lenses or mirrors. Okay. Start types. Types of Mirror. All right. The first one is called the concave, the concave or converging, converging mirror. The second one is called the convex or diverging mirror. All right. We have concave mirror, also have convex mirror. All right, so the major characteristic is this. A concave mirror produces images that are real and inverted. And we said a concave image, um, a concave mirror is also called a converging mirror. So that's for concave. For convex, we have that. A convex mirror produces images that are virtual, erect, and diminished irrespective of the position of the object from the mirror. So we expect that for concave, the catalyst is that for concave mirrors, they are real and inverted, while for convex, they are erect, um, they are virtual, and they are also diminished. So that's like um, the major difference between a concave and a convex mirror. Please, these are some of like the past questions that they always ask. So that's why I'm highlighting on this. My major focus will be on the solving part. All right, let's uh, proceed. So, aside this, we also have what's called a plane mirror. For a plane mirror, the size of an object is equal to the size of um, its image. Okay, it produces the same size of image for any object. Okay, that means for a plane mirror, the magnification of a plane mirror is one. All right. Um, let's look at some of the characteristics of a plane mirror before we proceed. So, let's look at. Let's look at some of the characteristics of a plane mirror before we proceed. Now, these are some of the characteristics of a plane mirror. Number one, the image is the same size as the object. Number two, it is erect. Number three, the image of an object is as far behind the plane mirror as the object is in front. Number four, uh, the image is laterally inverted. Right? Talk about the concept of lateral inversion. Uh, so next, 
All right, having said this, um, I'll give a link to a video on optics so you can learn more about optics in that video. All right, so check the link um, in the description of this video. You see a class of optics, but for now, I'm going to focus on the solving involving concave and convex mirrors. All right, so before we do this, um, let's look at what is called the mirror equation. Let's look at the mirror equation. Proper. All right. So the mirror equation is given by one all over f equals to one all over u plus one all over v. All right. So this is like um, the mirror equation. So let's define what's f, what's u, what's v. We have f is equal to focal length. Please measure in centimeters. U is equal to the object's distance, also in centimeters, and V is equal to the image distance, also in centimeters. All right. So these are like. Um, the meaning of F, U, and V. All right, so with this, uh, uh, what's a focal length? All right, by definition, a focal length is the distance between the center of a lens or curved mirror and its focus. All right, distance, the distance between the center of a lens or curved mirror and its focus. So that's like um, the definition for what. Um, in focal length is. Now, that aside, let's see how there are conditions guiding the way we apply this formula. All right. So let's see some of the conditions that guide the, or some of the rules that guide the way we apply this mirror formula. All right. Some of these rules include number one, um, the focal length, that's f, is positive for concave mirrors and negative for convex mirror. That's the first thing. Number two. The object distance u is always positive for both uh, the concave and the convex mirrors or length, whichever way. Number three, v, that's the image distance, is positive for a concave or converging lens and then negative for a convex or diverging lens. This is because for a convex lens, a virtual image is being formed. So because of that, uh, v becomes negative. That means if this, if I should apply this now to a convex mirror, I would have one all over f is equal to one over u plus one all over negative v. All right. Now let me show this here, please. One of one another major difference between a concave and a convex lens is that for a concave lens, a real image is formed. A real image for concave, real image is formed. Why for convex, a virtual image is formed. This is another major difference between concave and convex. A real image is, a, is an image that, they, that can be caught on screen. Why a virtual image is an image that cannot be caught on screen. Alright, so this is like the difference between a real and a virtual image. So if I apply this equation correctly, that means for a convex lens, I will have 1 over f equal to 1 over u plus minus is minus 1 over v. So this becomes the mirror equation for a convex lens. Alright, so these are like um, three conditions in which the uh, mirror formula can be applied as regards to the concave and the convex lens. All right. Now, also, there's something called radius of curvature. Something called radius of curvature of a mirror. Now, if you're given the radius of curvature of a mirror, R, note that the relationship between radius of curvature of a mirror 
and the focal length is that the focal length of a mirror, of a curved mirror, is equal to half of the radius of curving chunk. Alright? So it means that from here, of course, if I cross multiply, it means that the radius of curvature is equal to 2 times the focal length of a curved mirror. This is another important um, concept you should take note of in optics. Alright, one other concept, the, let's look at the power of a lens. Um, so let me add it here. Power of a lens. Power of a lens. Now let's say P. All right, so the power of a lens is given by P, and P is equal to the inverse of the focal length. It is measured in um, an SI unit known as Delta capital D. Alright, so we have this. So please note these things. Um, note how we apply the mirror equation as regards to concave and convex lens. And also note um, about the rates of curvature that the focal length is equal to the rates of half focal length is equal to half rates of curvature of as you can see rates of curvature is twice the focal length and then finally the power of a length is equal to the inverse of the focal length measured in G of 3 capital D. One last concept let's look at the magnification of um, a mirror. So let's look at the next concept called magnification. Um, um, I'm going to be less. Think you see less there or of the lens. All right, let's look at the magnification of a lens. By definition, magnification in optics can be defined as the size of an image formed relative to the size of the object creating it. All right, that's the meaning of magnification. All right, it talks about the size of an image formed. Um, in relation or relative to um, the size of the object forming that image, all right? Um, in a mathematical concept or in a mathematical way, we can define magnification as the ratio of the height of an image to the height of an object. So magnification is M, mathematically is equal to height of image all over height of object. Let's call that's equals let's call height of image H I all over height of object as H naught. We have H I over H um, zero H naught H O. Um, also we can express magnification in terms of object and um, image distance as magnification being image distance image distance all over object distance we said this is uh, V all over U so we have this as magnification note magnification has no SI unit has no SI unit all right so please note this magnification has uh, no SI unit all right so let's uh, with this concept let us solve some uh, past questions 